Hey guys, hope you're well and welcome to this slightly different showcase. This one's going to be a roundup of a selection of some commissions which we have completed recently, including some custom service characters and some smaller projects. So first up, let's have a look at the Scythe of the Emperor custom service character, which we've completed. Marek Essel is the character, and it has been created by Ben from Custom Service and then painted by Simon from the painting team. This was a great commission for us to work on for our client, a real massive fan of the Scythe of the Emperor. Uh, their character, Marek Essel, which we've created, uh, as you can see here, wielding a giant power scythe, which is just an awesome weapon, obviously part of the lineage and heraldry of the scythe of the Emperor. Um, really nice use of that two-tone colour scheme. We've got those thigh armour plates, obviously, in yellow and the jump pack, plus also the torso in yellow. And then you've got that really dark obsidian armour just flanking it on the shoulders and arms and also legs. Really like the use of the burgundy or maroon for the tabard as well. It adds a real warm colour to the sort of midsection of the uh, the legs and just adds that sort of richness of colour compared to the like, sort of colder black tones that are on the armoured areas. Um, real great thing about this as well, obviously, is the narrative that's also been used on the base. So as you can see here, we've got some uh, a fallen carnifex head that's got a, a sight of the Emperor Storm Shield uh, conveniently implanted in the cranium of that carnifex. Um, just uh, just parking that storm shield for a little bit while he's uh, dispatching another Xenos foe. Um, I do really love what Simon's done here with the subtle glow effect on the power scythe. So if we just turn it around here, you can see really nice sort of bluish tone on that power node on the blade there. Uh, really vicious, aggressive looking stance as if he's about to sweep down and finish something off, which is great. Um, as we look around the back as well, something else that's, uh, that Simon's done a great job when it comes to actually the painting of this, there's a real subtlety and refinement to the sort of nicks and little chips and things on the uh, cowlings and armoured areas of the jump pack, which is quite nice. Um, when making this, Ben had a real good opportunity to uh, to sort of uh, play around with the, uh, the actual composition of the piece and the pose and stuff. Making the weapon was obviously something that was integral to it for the character as well, which is really, really great. Um, one of the things I do really love is just the, uh, the use of the subtle blues on the tusks on the Fallen Carnifex. As you can see, they're just adding in that cold vibe on those kind of like uh, mandible kind of weapons uh, that the, uh, the kind of X head has got. If we look around the back as well, um, where that uh, storm shield is conveniently parked, you can see the um, you can see the uh, the green blood that's just, um, just sort of like oozing out of the wound there as well, which is just a real nice use of that kind of green uh, contrasting color. Uh, onto the uh, to the red carapace of the Carnifex. Uh, but overall, a really phenomenal miniature for our client's collection. A scythe of the Emperor wielding a scythe, jumping into the fray uh, to lead their army and be at the forefront of their collection. So next, let's have a look at the first of the smaller projects from this roundup. We've got some orcs amongst these commissions. Uh, really do love orcs personally. And uh, what better model to show off than Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka in all of his devilish glory. Uh, we'll pull him forward and have a look at him first. So Eric from the painting team has worked on all of the orcs in this small project that are gonna be shown in this roundup. And uh, as I mentioned, starting with Gazgul, Phenomenal miniature before we even talk about the paintwork that Eric has done on this. Uh, really absolutely covered in details as you'd expect with an orc miniature. I love the pose of Gazgar. I think it's probably one of my favorite orc models. Uh, really menacing, super aggressive as you expect with any orc. And uh, Eric's done a truly tremendous job with all the painting of this. Really refined. The face and the skin tone looks absolutely exquisite. Uh, really well painted and you can see every little bit of detail on the huge hulking suit of armor that Gazgol is wearing uh, has been fully done. Really nice subtle weathering on some of the sort of more sort of aggressive parts like for example the massive power claw that he's wielding. Really consistent edge highlighting that's been painted across all areas of the miniature. Uh, one of the things I do really like about it is just some of the free-handed details like for example the checker pattern on the shoulder guard there that's just been done. Uh, you can see all the belts of ammunition just flying out that massive big shooter that he's got. Uh, and they're all individually highlighted really nicely. If we just move around the miniature, so I'll just turn it this way so you can have a look. You can see all the cable and everything has been fully painted, which is just great. Um, as we move around, you'll see every aspect of weathering and detail has all been done and uh, just really rendered and painted extremely nicely. One of the things that I think is really great on this miniature is just the basing. Um, Eric's done a great job of adding extra details onto the base. Uh, to give it a kind of like fallen building kind of vibe. Um, obviously there's quite a substantial piece of detail that does come with uh, with Gazgo on, on this miniature, but just combining it with some other details on the base to really add a sort of like derelict building kind of vibe uh, and an urban setting just works really nicely. You wouldn't expect the orcs to be attacking some world of Yimis, um, but yeah, just really, really well rendered and well painted um, and just a really nice example of Gazgo at Thraka here for you all to see. 
So after looking at Gasgol, we cannot forget the best sidekick in all of 40k with the most devilish and fiendish and cheekiest orc of them all, we have Makari, the flag bearer of Gasgol Thraka. Despite being a secondary character with Gasgol, this guy also has loads of really interesting little details, like for example, the banner and the stun that he's wielding um, with all the little sort of trinkets and totems just hanging off. And I do really like what Eric's done with this sort of transition of color on those tassels that are just flying off the, off the pole, which I think is great. That lovely deep crimson through to the kind of the blackish tone is just really nicely done. Um, and as you'll see, as we move the model around, um, all the little trinkets and details, even the horns on Macari's helmet have all been painted with striations, which just worked really nicely. And um, you can see that uh, scion head on the base as well has been fully painted uh, just with all the details on there, just to give a bit of two-tone to the skin and boots, obviously with the helmet as well. Um, but I love this little guy. I think he's a great little character and really been painted to an exceptional level here to complement Gasgol in all the little details and colors that have been used. So after looking at Macquarie, let us jump to Gasgol's other right-hand man, which is a phenomenal war boss in Mega Armor. Other than Gasgol, this has to be probably my favorite Orc model in the Orc range, purely because not only do you get a war boss in Mega Armor wielding a giant serrated axe, um, you also get a cheeky little grot on top with a shooter firing away at some other target. And I just think the overall sculpt and composition of the model before any work is done is just probably one of my favorites. Eric has really gone to town on this miniature and uh, I've got to say the skin is some of my favorite orc skin that I've seen done by a member of the team here at Siege. I think it's done really, really well, uh, really well painted with lots of highlights and striations across all the different muscular structure, all the claws and teeth and nails are all done really nicely. Um, great use of color, obviously being a goth uh, war boss, you've got the uh, the black armor as expected, and then you've got the lovely red accents that giving that warmth and uh, sort of aggression to the miniature. Um, I've mentioned it on a few bits, but the basing on this is like an urban kind of like feel with like uh, some stone work and then we've got some metal gantries and things which have just been done really nicely. Even all the metal work on the base has got loads of scratching and striations on there to show lots of use and uh, where the, the uh, perhaps other orcs in Mega Armor have been charging forwards and scratched up all that floor in front of him. But um, really nicely done. If we move around the back, you'll see even around the back, you've got the power pack there of the suit of Mega Armor, just really well painted with all the metallics fully highlighted. You've got the uh, exhaust stacks there done in the light brass as well, just to really add a bit of tonal variance onto the metallics and add interest. Um, one of my favorite bits is the warm leather that's been done on the, uh, the, the grip of the giant dual-handed axe that he's wielding. You can see all the highlighting done on every aspect of the leather work there as well. Um, and you cannot forget the cheeky chap on top with the, uh, the, the big shooter just firing away at something while, uh, while the war boss is charging forward ready to clobber someone with this giant serrated disc axe. Uh, but that's this awesome war boss to join Gasgol and Macquarie. So next, following on from the Orcs, we have a few miniatures from a larger commission of some Emperor's children. Uh, some really, really vibrant miniatures for you to have a look at with loads of different details on them. Uh, we've pulled forward our, our favorite three. So we've got a champion, a plasma gunner, and also a converted banner bearer with a free-handed banner that's been done by one of the team. So let's jump in and have a look at these. I'm gonna pull forward the plasma gunner first so that you can have a look at him and we'll work up to the banner. One of my favorite things about Empress Children is just the use of the absurdly bright armor color and this miniature does not disappoint. You can see how vibrant the pink is and I love the uh, contrasting blue used for the plasma. I think the, uh, that turquoise and pink uh, complementary scheme just works really nicely. Uh, one of the things that our client asked for is a few things in particular, like for example, like some of the um, parts around the back are done in a green as well, where they wanted a bit of a green accent, like a really nice jade colored green on there as well, which is really, really nice. Um, you can see obviously all the edging done on the armor panels and areas of detail, just really sharply executed and a nice warm, rich gold used on some of the sort of cowlings on the plasma gun, plus also the shoulder pad with the uh, symbol there you can see. Uh, one of the things I do really like about the Chaos kits is they do just have, number one, loads of trim, but secondly, they have loads of really interesting little details, like for example, these little sort of like bony crests just growing out the legs and stuff, uh, just adding that chaotic feel and vibe to the miniatures. Uh, you can see all the leather work on this miniature has been done in black as well, keeping that sort of like high contrast black and pink scheme in unison across all aspects of the miniature. Uh, with the basing on the force, we've got almost like a sort of ash waste kind of like environment. We've got a bit of pipe sticking up on this one's base. Uh, but you've got nice ash waste, sort of desaturated dark browns with some grayer areas of detail as well. Uh, and that's consistent across all the miniatures in the force. Moving on from the plasma gun, let's have a look at the champion. Uh, another great miniature that has some really lovely details. 
Every warband needs a champion to lead it, and this one is a great example of that. He's got a plasma pistol and giant power fist, which is just great. And uh, this, this model has been painted by Will from the team, along with all the other Emperor's children. So really well executed by Will. He's done a great job on all of the sort of vibrant colors, plus also all the edge highlighting that's been done across the various details on the miniature. This chap has also got a cape. Now, whether it's flesh, it's up to you to decide, but it's got some lovely magenta tones in there. Uh, just showing either a sort of like etheric kind of feel or potentially it is some flesh that's been ripped from an enemy. Uh, I would prefer to go with the latter potentially for Empress Children, but up to you to decide. And um, one of the things I do really like about this is just the sparing use of the gold across the miniature, just to add a little bit of a more royal feel and add a richness to the miniatures. Some of the new Chaos Marine heads are really brilliant. I mean, this one in particular has got loads of little dimples and things on there, and it really just fit in quite nicely with the Empress Children feel and vibe of this project. This is the awesome champion that's going to be one of the leader figures in this commission. Finally, we have the banner from the force and I've been teasing it for long enough. So let's jump in and have a look at this awesome freehand banner and banner bearer. So wielding the colors of the Empress children, we have this glorious banner bearer with a custom banner and the banner has been freehanded by Ewan from the team, uh, adding that livery of the Empress children for this Astartes to carry into battle. Um, the combination of Will doing an exquisite job on the bearer and then Ewan doing this really exquisite banner just looks great when all pulled together. Uh, and one of the things I do really like is how the banner is being held quite close and tight to the miniature uh, and almost in a guarding fashion. Uh, with that sword outstretched there just to defend himself, which is just great. If we move the miniature around, you'll see the back. You've got another one of those flesh capes there just on the back, uh, which is really nice to add some sort of more warmer tones to the back of the miniature. Uh, he's got his bolt gun stowed there, held by a uh, lovely green tentacle, as you can see, um, just on the backpack. Uh, and as we move around again, I'll just to show that beautiful banner here on the miniature, um, again, with that winged clawed hand of the Empress Children just on display. And you've got the Empress Children written on the scroll there, which is just really refined and well executed. That's this beautiful banner to be part of this absolute perfect Empress Children commission. So following on from the Empress Children, I have saved my favourite miniature. And it's been very difficult to decide on a favourite this time around, being honest. Uh, but we have custom service Kato Sicarius, which is something from the moment that our client booked it in, I could not wait to see this thing brought to life by two members of the Siege team, one from custom service and one from the painting team. So let's dive in and see the master of the second company of the Ultramarines in all of his Primaris glory. So our client, who's a massive fan of the Ultramarines and specifically the second company, approached us to create through custom service Kato Sicarius in all of his resplendent glory uh, in a miniature for their collection. Um, this model has been completely converted and sculpted by Simon from the custom service team. And a lot of work has gone in to create this truly exquisite miniature in this super commanding pose that you can see here as he's just advancing down or bearing down on some foe of the Ultramarines. Um, it's really, really lovely to see a model like this look so exquisite with and look almost so natural as if one that you could simply purchase. Um, but just really, really well done by all members of the team who have worked on it. Um, so handing over from Simon, who obviously converted and hand sculpted this, it went on to Nathan from the painting team, who has absolutely blown it out of the water by painting him in the Macragian vibrant royal blue that you'd expect Ultramarines to be painted in. Um, and we've got a really, really lovely, rich red royal cape on the back of it there, as you can see, with all the, the, the tonal variants that you can see across the different details on the miniature. One of my favorite things on this miniature is the Roman-esque style key line on the inside of the cape. Uh, Nathan's done a great job of painting that all the way around the cape at various different points and folds and just shows the amount of attention and time and care that are put into miniatures with us here at Siege Studios. Um, also, you can see on the banner, you've got Sicarius on the scroll there, just written obviously his name on that banner. I'm a huge fan of back banners from second edition. So to see a captain with one once again is absolutely glorious. Um, one of the things that I think is really nice to see is just a model like this getting a unique version for our client. 
Um, just something really nice to have as, as part of your collection, really given the opportunity to, to make your own character or have your character how you want them in your arm, your collection. Um, but both Nathan and Simon have really done a tremendous job on this project and uh, really happy and also very sad at the same time because this one's got to go back to the client and I would love to keep it here at the studio. So there we have it, Kato Sicarius to finish off this showcase of all of these recently completed commissions by the team here at Siege. I do hope you've liked them all. Let us know in the comments which one is your favorite. Now, if you are interested in a commission with us here at Siege, be it for a small project, an army, or even a custom service character, do not hesitate in going to the description of this video where you'll find a link to our website and contact form. From all the team here at Siege and myself, a massive thank you for watching the video. I'll see you very soon on the next one. And don't forget, Ultramarine fans, courage and honor.